question is, is it possible to achieve the same results without taking mock exam? So who wants to go first? Well, I'm, I'm not sure about that, you know. But, well, as for me, mock really helped me. But I, think, I don't think that uh, those who don't take mocks will get a 5.5 or something. Russell? Uh, I would say in order to get 8, mocks are essential, really, because uh, if you don't take mock and, and it's the first time that you're taking an exam of the IELTS test, I mean, and it's going to be really hard to imagine what it looks like. Uh, yeah, you may be doing some kind of practices, but it's not the thing as in real mock because you have to sit in the test for three hours or, or even more and if you're not prepared for this properly by doing mocks, I think it will be really hard for you to get adapted to the situation. Yeah, maybe at least like one time, ju just to see how everything runs. Sure. Yeah, I completely agree with you guys. Um, well, before I took the mock, Elzada, our, our teacher, urged me to take it, but I was like, why do I need it? Because I thought it's like useless for me, but it actually gives you a very um, good idea of how the exam will be. So by the time the IELTS test actually comes, you won't be really surprised by the uh, amount of questions or the different variety of the questions. Okay. So the next question is, oh. how can I get nine in listening? What about reading? Well. I think that uh, YouTube videos and just movies really help you develop your listening skills because, well, uh, the, the, the language there is more like casual and you can understand how people uh, talk and yeah, so just listen to many things, listen to fun stuff, even some uh, stupid videos on Instagram that you don't care about or that you find interesting. <laughs> uh, you, you can just watch them and yeah, it, it, it really helps you develop your listening skills because it's not only about the, the tests, the listening tests, because if you practice just the listening tests of IELTS, I don't really see that you're gonna achieve like nine. Yeah, I, I mean, I agree as well in there. Um, a lot of different strategies I think you guys can use. Did you guys use any strategies during the exam for reading or listening? Strategies? Yeah, like to make it you know easier so that you don't waste as much time, I guess, as reading the text. Well, yeah, I mean. Well, yeah. Well, so if you just yeah, if you look at I don't know. <laughs> you can look up different strategies online, which will uh, sort sort of save you time and which will help you get the results you need. And so you won't be, well, how can you say this? So um, you'll be more efficient with your t uh, uh, time, basically. Unfortunately, I couldn't get nine in listening. <laughs> 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 I got only 8.5, but I can say that I used to watch, as you said, like Instagram videos of wines. Vines, uh, yeah. The American wines, yeah. especially when they're talking so fast yeah. and you gotta catch the what words they're saying, what they want to say, and while they scream or the, when they show their emotions, the best thing that you can listen to and develop your Yeah, and the question had the second part, what about reading? And I would suggest that you read books in English because, yeah, they, they really help you develop your vocabulary, your fantasy, everything. So, yeah, just casual books. Yeah. Yeah, the books or sometimes magazines. It might help you to get some ideas if yeah. you have some questions on the magazines as well in your speaking. Like, what kind of magazines do you read or yeah. talk about magazines that you have? And you, yeah, and newspapers as well, because the vocabulary there is more formal. Yeah. And if you have a, ta a text that is really, really hard and the vocabulary is like very complicated, then the newspapers could really help you. Mm -hmm.